so I'll tell you a story about material I'm trying to understand. And just like in the title, it starts with pencil and scotch tape. Pencil because of the material um, that makes the drawing part, historically called lead. Um, and this material is not lead, it's graphite. Uh, that's a piece of graphite. And if we took a high quality graphite and zoomed very, very, very close, what would we would see are layers of carbon atoms arranged in hexagons within planes. Um, and the distance between planes is much bigger than the distance between two carbon atoms within the plane, the closest atoms. So that the layers are actually reasonably weakly coupled. So now we take a thin piece of graphite, put it on top of scotch tape, fold the scotch tape, and unfold. And that's it. And it turns out that graphite will rip somewhere between the layers and we'll end up with two thinner flakes. And if you repeat that many, time, many times with some skill, you can actually thin the material down to one atomic layer. And that's an um, example of what you're looking at. It's is called graphene and it's one layer of carbon atoms arranged in hexagons. And it's even better than that because it doesn't fall apart. You can pick it up, put somewhere else. Uh, for example, on a specially designed metal scaffolding. Uh, so the black is some metal, and in between you're looking on one layer of atoms hanging in thin air. Um, so in case you're not impressed by the idea of handling a material that is just one uh, layer of atoms thick, uh, I'll tell you a little more about why it might be useful. So first of all, electrons uh, in graphene are governed by um, an equation that is very similar mathematically to another one that was written down by uh, Paul Dirac a long time ago in the 1920s. Uh, but the interesting point is that uh, Paul Dirac uh, wrote this equation to describe, uh, to describe relativistic particles with spin. Relativistic means moving with a velocity close to speed of light. Now, obviously, that's not what, ha what is happening to electrons in graphene. Their velocity is actually about 300 times smaller. But the mathematical connection is interesting because that means that instead of investing lots of money in, in colliders like that, if you want to investigate uh, relativistic physics, you just have to play with this material. Uh, and one of interesting phenomena that should happen uh, and does is associated with quantum tunneling. So you might know that quantum particle incident on a barrier might, might has a non-zero chance of tunneling through, as opposed to me trying to run through the wall. Uh, now, a quantum particle governed by a Dirac equation, incident straight on a similar barrier, has 100% probability of passing through. Uh, another interesting bit is uh, the way electrons in graphene react to electric field. So modern electronics is based on silicon. Uh, so if you think, you can think about electrons in silicon reacting to electric field when we turn on our computer, kind of like an old and dependable Volkswagen Beetle. Now, if we were able to make the same devices with graphene, then we would get them much quicker because electrons in this material react kind of like a Ferrari by comparison. Uh, moreover, this material is also the strongest material we know, uh, much, much stronger than steel. Um, what is interesting, you can also stretch it a little. It doesn't break immediately. You can stretch it by several percent before it breaks down. Um, so, after all I told you, it might not be surprising that the two people who obtained graphene in the way I told you, having fun with graphite and scotch tape, uh, 10 years ago got Nobel Prize for that. But the importance of that uh, fun in the lab is much greater than just graphene itself, because there are many other layered compounds that you can think of thinning down to one or two layers. And at least electronically, you can look at materials with properties ranging from insulators, semiconductors, metals. <coughs> and now you can think of designing your bulk material atomic layer by atomic layer. You know exactly what you want, essentially like uh, making your sandwich in the morning for breakfast. Um, and well, a very simple example of such a sandwich is graphene put on boron nitride. They're both made up of hexagons of different atoms. The hexagons are of a uh, slightly different size, and it turns out that when you put that in magnetic field, electronic spectrum, so properties of electrons, um, electronic spectrum is fractal. Uh, that means that it's built of self-similar repeating patterns, a little like the pattern here on that leaf. 
Um, and as a theoretical physicist, that's kind of the range of ideas I'm trying to understand. Thank you very much.